All right, chapter one talks about ethics of hacking and cracking. Um, it can be a good thing and it can be a bad thing. Okay? So uh, we're going to talk about all this stuff. Okay. Ethical or unethical hacking. Breaking into people's systems is obviously bad. You see it on the news all the time. Does anyone ever read Google News? There's usually something every day about somebody breaking into something. It says cracking is the illegal hacking into computer systems without the permission of the owner. Okay. So what if I was to uh, drive down your street and break into your wireless? Is that ethical or, or is that legal? No. No. Okay. So, yes, no. Um, is there a way that if I'm picking up wireless from my house from my neighbors that I can get on there? Actually, it's illegal because you have to have the permission to be able to right. walk out. They give you permission, fine. It, it, you can think of it this way. Even if they leave the wireless unsecured and wide open, it's just like they left their front door open on their house. Does that really mean you can just walk right on and sit in their living room and watch TV? Not really. Well, they're passwords, so I don't... I mean, you could break the password. But, again... That's what I'm wondering. Shouldn't do that. That's what I'm wondering. I'm assuming most of us at one time or another have done that. I was in Arizona, and I needed internet, so I stopped out behind a dry cleaner and was using the internet. Really legal? No. Okay. But, you know, when I, when I ran my ISP at my house, uh, right before I got rid of it, I was thinking about getting a high-powered wireless and actually transmitting it to the whole people on my side of the neighborhood because they would have got a much better connection and would offset part of my cost. But no, I got rid of the system at that point. But okay, all right. This is cracking is a crime. Okay. All right. What was the latest one? Anonymous broke into. Didn't they do someone's website just recently? Westboro Baptist Church. Oh, the West. That's right. The Westboro Baptist Church. He broke into there. They were talking about protesting the Sandy Hook. Uh, funerals and Someone said there was a protest by them in Choctaw a couple weeks ago. Did anyone know if it actually happened? Mm -hmm. I haven't heard anything. Yeah, so I didn't either. I mean, I saw it. They were going to do it. But sometimes I think, uh, is it really going to I don't know. Okay. All right. So there's two communities, white hat and black hat. Okay. The good versus the bad. Okay. Okay. There we go. White hat is says the good guy. Okay, black hat is normally the bad guys. Okay. <laughs> Let me read the news. Oh, that will answer the question. Well, sorry, man. That's the way it is. Sorry. But you know, if you think about it, I mean, come on, look at basketball players. Who's the good ones there? They're the black guys. The white guys are the bad. You can hit Larry Bird, ones. man. Now it's Bill like, Lambeer. Yeah, we have, what do we have? One white basketball player, Larry yeah, Bird? Bill Lambeer, you had um, Larry Bird. Yeah, yeah, okay, two. Out of how many? Don't forget about Dirk Nowitzki, Steve Nash. Oh. <laughs> Here's, uh, when was the last time you watched basketball? What? Oh, never. Okay. <laughs> so that's good. Okay. <laughs> All right, guys. Everything the good guys do is right, legal, and justified. Okay. But again, that does change as well, as laws are always changing. I mean, come on, wireless 20 years ago? There was no such thing. Gray hat, you know, it says, it says the, the economy of good and evil is not very good. Because sometimes, you know, it's like, so if you're working for the NSA and breaking into someone's system, are you a good guy or a bad guy? Well, you're a good guy, but you're a bad guy because you're breaking into someone's system. So it's not really clear cut anymore. Okay? It's like the uh, Stuxnet virus. When that first came out a few years ago, it was obvious it was made by the U.S. I'm like, positively made by the U.S. And it was, oh, no, China. Well, you do realize it was made by the U.S. Y'all did finally read up on that. It was actually made by the U.S. Now, does that mean the U.S. is the bad guy? Well, yeah, we broke into their system. So this whole good and bad is not really easy anymore, okay? And we got anonymous. You know, they're doing all kinds of – so are they good or bad? It depends on how you look at it. Depends. I mean, breaking into Westboro Baptist Church's website. That's obviously illegal, so they're bad. But they seem to be doing it for good, but it's bad. You know, it's kind of, it's hard to think about. So, it's tough. Okay. Hacker profile. You know, how about DEF CON? Ever, anyone ever go to DEF CON in here? I've never been. One of these years i got to go. Uh, I always forget about it until it's too darn late. But um, there was a guy, I don't think I had the video on here, but there was a guy up there, if you look on YouTube, there's a video, it's like, don't ever steal a hacker's laptop or something. You ever seen that one? Where was, someone stole his MacBook? Oh, it was uh, an old yeah. G4. 
Yeah. But he actually yeah. found the guy. Yeah. It was like it was Two amazing. It's later. like an hour yeah. long presentation, but it is. That's pretty cool. It's really cool. So if you get a chance, go watch it. It's like don't steal a hacker's computer or something like yeah. that. It's like from DefCon 11, but it was kind of cool. Okay, but a lot of times, you know, hackers you think they're bad guys, but they're not always. Okay. But there's a lot of techniques posted. I mean, you can find anything on the internet nowadays, like Metasploit. We're going to be playing with Metasploit in this class. Metasploit will basically connect to a system, tell you what the vulnerabilities are, and let you go right through them. So is that good or bad? Well, how it's used. It's made to find flaws. So as a good guy, I can use it to say, wow, all these machines have this vulnerability. You need to fix them. But if I was a bad guy, I could say, wow, all these machines have a vulnerability, and now I'm getting into them. So it really depends how you're doing it, okay? Okay, obviously the Black Hat Briefing, there's a lot of stuff going on there. Um, if you have never even heard about DEF CON, just go up and look at some of the different post things they have. I think they had one last year about a flaw in the subway cards in Boston or something. But they usually report the flaw before they present on it. But it's just amazing all the different stuff they put up there. Okay. Talk about the different types. Novices, internals, coders, all kinds of different people. You know, um, what's that movie? Um, Swordfish. Swordfish. Y'all seen Swordfish? You haven't Love seen Swordfish. That's an awesome movie. Love it. At the very beginning of the movie, he has like 30 seconds to break into something while he's being distracted. Oh, I see. <laughs> oh, yeah. Whoa. And, but if, I mean, oh, yeah, I can break into this federal computer in like 10 seconds. I'm thinking that's, <laughs> yeah, I think that's not quite the truth. But, you know, a lot of people break into computers all the time. I just think some of those movies, eh, a little, a little far-fetched. But, you know, there's a lot of them. Okay, a lot of different ways to catch it. Okay, it could be for curiosity, love of puzzles. I love forensics type stuff because it's like puzzles, trying to figure stuff out. Do I assign that? Yes. Wait, well, I was, I was told that you uh, broke into a uh, computer in the hospital while on drugs or... Oh, yeah. Uh, I was actually at the Midwest City, across from the old Target, there's a heart hospital there. Uh, they were doing arteriogram where they stick a camera in and take pictures of the inside of your heart. Well, they had me on some drugs to calm me down, I guess. And I'm looking at the computer over there. And I happened to know the, the nurse. She was a friend I went to church with. So I'm sitting there. And the way she logs in, she just wakes up the computer, s scrolls down. I can see all the patient name, patient number. She selects my name, hit enter. I'm like, what kind of security is that? <laughs> so I was... Like I said, I was on drugs. I was literally just getting ready to go into surgery. And I says, why don't you have security on this system? She goes, oh, Joe, you could get in here. Yeah, I reach over, I move the mouse, I scroll down to a different person, hit enter. I said, there you go, I'm in. She's like, oh, I guess that is pretty bad. I'm like, yeah. You leave it in a room with a patient. There's no password, no nothing. And it's like, I mean, it's not that I did admit. I just showed them. I'm, I don't know if they ever fixed it, to tell you the truth. But all my data was on there, and I'm assuming lots of other people were on there. No, I just got to get in for a surgery. Yeah, it was. Uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, I didn't trust. But puzzles, recognition or fame, hey, I broke into whatever, you know, that kind of stuff. Could be for revenge, you know, okay. Financial gain, maybe I'm doing to steal money from people. Or patriotism, <laughs> you know, all that kind of stuff. There's a lot of different things. Anyone ever see the Code Red virus? Code Red virus actually made me quite a bit of money. Um, I was working for an ISP, and they were going to pay me, I think it was 15000 to work part-time, whatever, just a couple hours a week. I ended up working way more than that. And I said, you need to pay me for, you need to pay me double, 30000 This is back in, like, 2000. I said, no, 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 the agreement was we're only going to pay you this. I'm like, well, fine, I'm out of here, I'm quit. So then the next day, read the code red virus hit, I'm like, oh, my God, all the servers got hit. And I'm like, oh, my God, what are we going to do? Ken, we need you to fix it. I said, I need a check. And they said, okay. They handed me a check, paid me 100 bucks an hour to fix it, and then I cashed the check and went. So it was, it's that good. So you can't make money at this stuff. <laughs> but I didn't do anything bad. I just had to go fix their, the code red virus. Actually, that virus was nice because it just rename your pages and put a hack by Chinese on there. All you do is delete that one and rename your pages back. You lost nothing. So it was kind of handy. Well, the FBI virus is pretty much easy as well. Oh, like yeah. The, 10 um, minute, maybe. The Good money pack money virus. Yeah. I told my class Tuesday night, some of you weren't in there, but I had a student come in over the break 
comes in, shuts the door like he's real scared, looking around. <laughs> and he goes, I need to talk to you. And he goes, you know, someone thinks I'm surfing porn. I'm like, oh, you got the money back, Ryder. He's like, what? So he brings the laptop, shows it. That's all it was. I mean, he went out and bought the money pack card, the $200 card, which non-refundable when you buy those. I don't even realize that. So luckily I had a PayPal account so we could just charge it and get his money back. But uh, he was freaking out over there. Yeah. All right, ethical hacking. Okay. I went through a certified ethical hacker course. It's kind of cool. We use like eight bazillion tools. You, know, you could use each one for five minutes, but it was kind of funny. At the beginning of the class, the instructor says, hey, every machine in here is fair game. Expect people to be breaking into your machines. Okay. Expect. So, you know, I mean, they were, they were unsecure. They were just real basics, also we could run everything on them. But there was one guy sitting in the front row. We installed the Netbus virus. But, yeah, it was Netbus virus. Well, I should play with that one in this class. You can open the CD-ROM and write stuff on the screen. Well, after we played with it, we all removed it. But he did. So all throughout the class, we were always connecting to the machine, making it go to different web pages, putting notes up there, you have a virus. And he didn't have a clue. He literally, the entire rest of the class, never did figure it out. I mean, he'd be over there typing, and we could take over his keyboard, so we'd be typing, and hitting enter, and all. It was really screwing up, but it's like, it was funny. It was, it was kind of different, okay? Network security is also a set of, you know, this stuff, you're breaking into computers, and also fixing them, finding vulnerabilities, all that kind of stuff, okay? All right, but this whole separation of ethical versus unethical is a big deal. So in forensics, and even in this class, we can teach you to use, like, Metasploit, for instance. Could it make you into a bad guy? Yeah, it could. We hope it doesn't, but it could. Okay, evolution of it. Okay, the modern concept began in the 1950s with MIT. There's a book out there called Hackers by Stephen Levy, and it talks about how at MIT they started the Model Training Club, and they got the first mainframe, and how that whole entire system worked. Okay, uh, they, fought, they came out with a password on the mainframe at MIT, so the people are like, how are we going to get into other people's accounts if there's a password? So I just put a note above the terminal that said, oh, when it asks for a password, just hit enter. So all the users on the mainframe were just hitting enter, so they all had blank passwords. So it was kind of funny. But this is the, um, I can't read it. But this is about one of the first hacks. I don't remember what it says. Sorry about that. Okay. How about War Games? Y'all seen that movie? It's an awesome movie. Um, basically, you use a war dialer. What a war dialer is is a modem, and you dial every phone number trying to make a connection. When I was up at the University of Tulsa, we had to do a, a security audit on the OU Health Science Center down on Lincoln and 10th Street, I think it is. I went down there, and I was assigned to do the war dialing because I lived here. So we were going to do it one weekend, a bunch of them went down there, and you know, different people did different things, but I was assigned to do the war dialing. I was all set. I had the whole phone number bank. The day before I did it, they called me, nope, can't do it, can't do it. They were worried since there was so many patients in there, and some of the numbers were patient lines, that I'd basically be waking up all the patients, and so I couldn't do the war dialing. But that's what, but have you ever seen war games? Kind of cool. He dials a number, and turns, he ends up getting into some supercomputer, and ends up playing tic-tac-toe with it. But it's, well, and also global food and nuclear war. But it's, it's kind of cool, okay? Virus and Trojans started in 1988. Man, they're like so rampant now. I got an email today, which it was from OSU. Is anyone an OSU sitting in here? Got an email from OSU. I guess there's an email going around the OSU email system affecting all kinds of computers. So what do you do if you get an email from someone you had no idea who they are, the content did not expect them? Delete it. I mean, it's, people don't. They open. It's like the I love you virus. Anyone ever get that? I had a client of mine that kept getting I love you virus over and over and over. It was a pretty easy fix. I mean, I wrote a little bat file to fix it, but they kept calling me. Yeah, I got the virus. And finally I said, dude, no one loves you. Just come on, get over it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but it was, it's crazy because the NIMDA virus, oh, the NIMDA virus was one of the first viruses that would infect via email, file share, or execution. It actually could do all, all of them. And I was working for an estate sale company. When someone dies, they got the estate. Well, they were all affected. And the way that one worked, you had to turn the network off and clean each machine before you turned it back on. Well, I, was, I had like three quarters of the machines clean. And I said, okay, I'm going home for the day, come back tomorrow. Well, the, the owner came in that night, oh man, I really need this file, went over and turned the network back on and affected them all over again. So, 
because that one actually it was like a virus worm. It really didn't even need to be executed to work, and it was it was crazy. But there's a lot of them out there. Okay, how about Captain Crunch? You ever heard of Captain Crunch? Okay, um, there we go. Um, John Draper, and there's a video here which we're not going to watch it because it's quite long, but get a chance, watch it. It's like an hour and a half long. It's really, really good. It talks about the original phone freakers and all this stuff. And you can go to actually to that point in the phone freaking. They talk about what they were doing. There's a, a part on there where a guy could actually make the tones with his voice. And they, they, they even show it. They're recording him. He's like, doo -doo -doo -doo. you know, make it with his sound. He goes, okay, I should be connecting to such and such a computer in this place. And I'll be darn it. Connects right in. So it's pretty amazing what they can do. But yeah, go watch the video. It's kind of kind of interesting. So that scene in Terminator isn't actually fake? It's actually true? Yeah, they could actually do it, yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, go watch the video. There's lots of them out there. Okay. Ooh, you know what? That one might be moved to... Well, you'll find it. It's easy enough. Okay. <laughs> All right, evolution of it. Um, it says, antisocial actions of crapper, or not crappers, <laughs> <not crackers. laughs> made it difficult to defend. Okay. How about Kevin Mitnick? Y'all know Kevin Mitnick? Some of Go you have probably heard of him. Originally, he was breaking into stuff. He was, got in trouble for the, can you dial a half? He'd be calling people, yes, please dial 1-800, blah, blah, and half. That was his big thing. I mean, stupid, but he got in trouble and went to jail. Now he's making big bucks. We wanted him to come speak here at the school, and he his fee was like fifteen thousand plus transportation. That dude, we want to speak for an hour. No, I ain't paying fifteen thousand plus transportation. It's crazy. Okay, okay. It says the hacker describes computer experts with malicious intent. Normally, you think of hackers as bad people. Hackers, the movie with Senator Bullock. Anyone ever seen Sneakers? Dude, that was nuts. Robert Redford movie. That was another awesome. good movie. There's a lot of movies out there about this kind of stuff, and yeah, a lot of it's fake. Like. Um, when we talked about earlier, um, sword bit. I mean, that was obviously crazy. But a lot of them, you know, have some components that are. Y'all see the new Die Hard's coming out? Die Hard 12 or Dark Knight? Doing it in a walker, isn't it? What? <laughs> walker. It looks good. It looks it's good. Been out there. No, no, it's not. I seen the. I went to three movies Saturday, and it was the preview in all three of them. It's like it's a good day to die hard or something. It's called. I like that. I love Die Hard. Watch them every Christmas. It's pretty awesome. Okay, so ethics behind it. There is a certification in this. I haven't taken the test yet. Do we, anyone know if you can take tests locally again? Uh, they changed it instead of uh, Prometrics. It's, it's now, Pearson uh, View, Pierce. but we had to go to Stillwater. Can we do it local again? Oh, you have to yeah. do that for like the teacher yeah. stuff. That's is it kind of like that? Is that Com can you do CompTIA local? Yeah, yeah. yeah okay, so that. we can do it again. Because I got a free voucher to take the darn test. I just didn't want to drive to Stillwater. Yeah, you can go to the press time. Yeah, I guess Prometrics okay. went under or something like that. Yeah, yeah. Prometric was too... The reason they were bad was you had to have a dedicated lab with dedicated, uncertified people running it, which was weird. And then, you know, that's all it can be used for. Pearson View says, yeah, while they're taking a test, it has to be monitored. Other than that, they don't really care, which is not nice. And I always wondered, why would it have to be uncertified people? Had to be run by people who did not hold the certifications, well, and we're not so trying to they, get the certifications. You so you wouldn't be, ooh, I'm running the test. Let me read the answers off your screen and pass it. It was kind of weird. But okay, That's really a good certification. I went to the class. It was very interesting. It's nothing you couldn't learn on your own. All basically is the million tools and how to use them all. So, All right. Um, there's a lot of other certificates out there. Security Plus, I know some of you got, you just got yours, didn't you? Like a couple weeks ago. Okay, there's tons of them out there. ISC. I just saw an email yesterday about the top rated certifications. Um, project management is currently number one. The average salary is 93000 a year. CISSP is number two at 92000 a year. ITIL is like number five, but there's a lot of high paying certifications out there. Okay. So, you know, get some. If you don't have some, just get them. I mean, they're not. We have simulation software for Security Plus, Network Plus, and A Plus. The Security Plus is probably updated because it just, yeah, it just changed again. It just changed this year, didn't it? Now it's, it's like been a couple right. weeks. Sucks because I just renewed the other one in the fall, too. Oh, well. But it can't hurt, okay? All right. But there's a lot, lot of different stuff. Like the CISSB is pretty much the hardest one out there. I've been told it's an 80% failure rate. It's a six hour exam. I took and passed it the first cost. time. Yeah, it's expensive. And um, when you pass, they tell you pass. That's it. They don't tell you your score or nothing. When you fail, they tell you your score and what you screwed up on. 
Because their reasoning is, if you pass, you pass. If you pass with one point or 20 points, you still pass. So. But there's a lot of them out there. EC Council, the one that does like the ethical hacker and all that kind of stuff. It's okay, I have to ask this. Are they written, or do you actually do things? It, they're different. Like the CISSP is all written. They literally go to a room, and they tell you. You sit there, and you sit there, and they give you different tests based on where you're sitting. And it's all done on paper. There's no electronic copies anywhere. Other ones like uh, Ethical Hacker, that's on a computer. Most of them are on a computer. Yeah, okay. But the reason CISSP is so hard is there's really no good. You know, I went through all the test banks for what I could find. I took tests, I didn't see a single question on there. The topics were the same, but I mean, for something like the Security Plus, you can literally find the entire test out there. Same with ITIL. You can find the entire test word for word. CISSP, you can't. At least I haven't seen it yet. Okay, but there's a lot of them out there. CCNA, there's Microsoft's, you know, I, I have the MCSC from Microsoft and all those. And I have Novell. Novell's on the list as one of the top 10 certifications. I'm like, why? <laughs> Who still runs Novell? Does anyone know anyone still run? I know the tax commission was running. Schools. I don't know if they still are. Who is? Schools. <clears throat> schools still are? Yeah, at still my, my, uh, my cousin is like the head of some school district out in North Carolina, and they still use it. So this is Novell. Wow, that is crazy. Okay. But there are some out there. Okay, so what needs to be secured? Pretty much everything. <clears throat> Don't you agree? Pretty much everything needs to be secured. Because, actually, what it is, it's a wireless network. Now, we have a wide open wireless network. Is that a good or bad thing? <laughs> it's both. It's good. Y'all can use it. I mean, many a times, look, over the weekend, there's people sitting outside using it. But it is separated from the regular network. So even if you did get in it, you're not going to get into anything. Okay? But other places like TU, you have to connect with a VPN client, you have to have a special account, you got to have a special key installed, so some are more secure than others, okay? Okay? Some people break into use wasted computer energy or Wi-Fi that's not being used, okay? When I ran my ISP, I used to give churches free internet, or free websites. And way back in Server 2000, if you've ever come and played with that, when you installed Server 2000, pretty much everything was turned on. Okay, every service was enabled, every port was wide open. Well, and when you made a website, the default was turn on anonymous FTP. And if you went to turn off, it even warned you, "Whoa, are you sure you want to do this?" It's like crazy. But I forgot to turn theirs off. Man, within just a couple of days, my entire server was full. I had all the Star Wars movies. Someone got in and just started using me as a file distribution service. <laughs> was, what the heck? And what sucked was they did it with a file path that I couldn't get to. Because you could, there's actually some characters that you can use that you can't navigate to. And it was crazy. But I finally got rid of it all. But some people consider it wasted energy. I was up here well, was quite a few years ago now on a Saturday. And I was running ISA server on a lab upstairs. And I see all this traffic. Saturday? No classes? No students? Why the heck could get all this traffic? Well, Bill Richards, you teach our uh, Linux classes? Excellent guy. I hope we can get him back again. He was, he lived and breathed of Linux Linux. Well, I forgot he was running SETI at home on the lab computers upstairs. I was fine with it. We weren't using them. And when they were idle, it would actually break radio signals. I'm like, what the heck is going on? Well, that's what it was. It was all his traffic. So it was, it was kind of funny, okay? But using other people's bandwidth is a crime. You read in the paper where people do go to jail for using bandwidth. Okay. When I first got hired here at Rose State in 2000, my birthday came around, and our dean at the time gave me a computer game for my birthday. I'm like, what the heck is this? I was in the military. You don't get nothing for free. I said, oh, I have to go try this. Home. No, 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 go try it in your office. So I'm going to install a game on my office computer and play it during Rose State's time. Okay, I mean, <laughs> you're the boss, I guess. So it's kind of different. Some places are different, okay? Many find attempting to copy, download, and use proprietary software. A lot of people do that. Does it mean it's right? No. I, I have tons of movie, digital movies. I go to Redbox, and I don't always watch them right then. I make a digital copy of it so I can watch it later. Is that illegal? Actually, it's not, because I'm not distributing it. It's for my own personal use. So different things there. And I'm one of those, a lot of times I'll download software to try it and then I'll go out and buy it. 
you know, if you like it. You know, I like a lot of it's got the 30-day trial on it or something like that. And if you like it, then you buy it. There was more stuff was like that. All right, um, issues. Okay, you have a responsibility to society. So you find a vulnerability on something. What should you do about it? <clears throat> do about it? Tell, tell them about it. I mean, you should tell someone. But be careful. If you say, "Yeah, I, I was breaking into your network this weekend, and I saw that," you, no, that's not good. There was a Canadian uh, student uh, uh, computer security who. There was a uh, pro, or, uh, company that was running their software that holds a database of students, and he, he was trying to build an app to work with it and realized that there was a vulnerability and told them about right. it. And then later on, um, he, he ran, uh, I can't remember the name of the program, but it was some kind of exploitable uh, web exploit or something. Right. Found out that they didn't fix it. They found out about it, and then they came after him, and he was actually expelled for it oh, from geez. the school. So there's like that fine line of yeah. not yeah. wanting that exploit on a live website. Right. Hmm. Well, <coughs> when I used to take care of a bunch of gyms around town, I still take care of one of them, but uh, every quarter we had to be scanned by this external security company. And every time they would come back and kind of, oh, you got a vulnerability on port 80, and there was a sequence number guessing attack. What they were doing is they were connecting into a uh, video recording system that's outdated, but it's not on any of the network, and they were pointing the wrong ports. It's just tough. I mean, finding errors and getting people to fix them, it is. It's not always easy. But, but you know, like, sucks, but, you know, he shouldn't have exploited it, right. but they should have fixed it as well. Well, they, they commended him for finding it and stuff like that, but then, then they went back and it was like, you know, has been fixed, and he ran it, and all of a sudden they're like, hey, oh, great. Then got nice. Okay. But normally you do this stuff to help them improve their stuff. You know, hey, here's a problem. Okay. That kind of stuff. Okay. So an ethical hacker says uses hacking as a defensive purpose. So we want to find problems and fix them. Okay. All right. Um, system security says they prefer to pay hackers to discover their weaknesses and security gaps. Kevin Mitnick makes tons of money now exploiting systems. People pay him to do it. You always hear the stuff on the news. Okay. They work to protect the technology, so they do this in the good way. Okay. All right. They must be experienced in software engineering. So if you think you need to know anything about coding, so many people don't think, oh, I want to be a network administrator. Do you know how to write any kind of code? Nope. Can you imagine adding a thousand users on a network by hand? Ain't happen. You should see Roy in there. If I ever have Roy do something twice, oh no. He writes a script to do it or something. Even to go in and pull all the grade or the the, the stuff for the students each met for the grant. He wrote a script that he clicks and automatically does all his browser windows, enters all the data, and it's like, dude. So it's good to know that kind of stuff because you make your jobs a lot easier. Okay? All right. So that's the end of this chapter. Okay?